What's up, duelists? A few weeks ago, a duelist by the name of Miguel hit me up in the Discord DMs. Miguel was super polite. He was like, yo, really enjoy the series, really enjoy the content, but I'm, you know, a little newer to the format, and I was wondering if you did any coaching specifically with your favorite deck, basically, the fairy deck. I was like, hmm, that's not something I normally do, but I could be open to it. Would you be down to do it for a sort of series? I'd be open to do it pro bono if you're down to do it in video. And Miguel was brave enough to come on in front of thousands of people and level up in front of you guys so that you guys can help learn alongside him. Shoutouts to Miguel for all of this. Really, really big thank you to him for helping me put this series together. First things first, Miguel and I had a call. We talked about a few of Miguel's strengths and weaknesses. He said he's normally used to playing paper Yu-Gi-Oh. He's more of a tactile guy. He doesn't play on Dueling Book that often, but of course, Dueling Book offers a lot of resources, a lot of practicing stuff that helps you improve. So we're going to be using Dueling Book for the majority of the series. Hopefully, if this series is successful, we'll be able to do one IRL video at the end of all of it, which is something that I'd be super pumped up to do at the end goal, which is this PS5 tournament that he is hoping to top at the end of this coaching session. Before we get into things, if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. About 35% of you aren't already. Leave a like on these videos. These videos are a lot of effort. They're a lot of work from both me and Miguel. They take a little bit more time than your average video, and there's a lot of information in them. So it really means a lot to me if you guys leave a like. If you guys do leave comments, make sure and leave positive comments to everyone involved, our opponents, and Miguel. Of course, if you're going to leave a negative or hateful comment or a critical comment, leave it for me. Uh, definitely don't want these people to catch any sort of like negative feelings or whatever from doing doing this sort of stuff that's supposed to be an educational experience. Before we get into the video, I want to talk about the deck we're using. Today's session is going to be structured a little differently. In today's session, we play a match where I'm sort of muted on the mic and I'm commentating over his plays, kind of talking about what he's doing. And we also get his sort of like thought process because he'll be talking as well. It's it, It'll be cool. You guys will see it. And then um, the second part of this is where we play a, uh, a game together where we're both behind the wheel. In the future sessions, we'll start things off with a replay of a match I'll have him play sometime in between the two lessons. Then we'll go into one where we're both behind the wheel. And then we'll go into a third part of the video where training wheels off, he's got to play and play against either me or play against another like ranked opponent or something like that. We'll figure it out more as the series develops but that's the general structure for these videos and these lessons. The deck we're playing today is this version of Fairies. I've been asked a couple times what I would bring to a tournament if I were to bring a deck to a tournament, and I would bring this exact 55 cards to a tournament if I was going to go to one. There's a few changes from my normal Fairy build in here that I've been testing a lot the last few weeks, and I want to go into them. Three main cuts. I cut a Raikou from the main, I cut a Nova Summoner from the main, and I cut a Bottomless Trap Hole from the main. I found that those three cards were the cards I was signing out the most often. They were the cards that were underperforming the most in Game 1 games. And I added two Thunder King Ryos and an extra copy of Archlord Christia. Archlord Christia is a very broken card. It can be a little bit of a brick, but I think you just need to accept that you're going to brick occasionally in order to have the extra added power and guarantee that you're going to see Christia early enough against the faster decks of this metagame. Thunder King Ryo also helps you out against all the people trying to do unfair stuff with Stratos in the mirror match against other Christias or against stuff like Judgment Dragon, Dark Arm Dragon, stuff that can just really give this deck problems, even Bionic Synchro Monsters. In the sideboard, I've got a few notable inclusions. Neospatian Grammole is a new technology for this deck. This card is amazing in today's metagame and in this deck in general. It helps you deal with set monsters that give you issues like Hamster, Spy. It also helps you deal with Dupe Frogs, that kind of thing. It helps you deal with Absolute Zero at plus one. It helps you deal with any Synchro at plus one, which is really important. It's a, it's a solid one. It's a solid pick for this deck. I've got one copy of Kaiku. This card helps you out against the Lightsworn and Vayu decks that are very popular, as well as against the Hero decks. It floodgates out Miracle Fusion. They can't activate that kind of stuff. Floodgates out, you know, Vayu. That kind of affects Necro Gardena. And then in the other side of things, I've got one Shadow Imprisoning and one System Down. I think these two cards do a good job of responding to threats in the way that I think is fit right now. In... Regards to Mask of Restrict, that's a card I've been uh, saying is very important. Mask of Restrict versus Caius right now, all the Caius decks are playing three Wind Blast and some number of Regeki Break. So if you Mask of Restrict, they have Caius in their hand, then they'll just wait till they draw a Wind Blast or Regeki Break, remove your Mask of Restrict, and kill you. 
because decks have so many outs, plus the frog decks are also playing like Uni Frog, Stratos, a lot of other ways to pop stuff beyond the uh, the normal means, Heavy Storm MST. I think that Mask of Restrict, keeping that Caius in the hand is actually a detriment. With Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, you can wait till they summon the Caius, use it as a one shot, like Effect Failure and Effect Negation against the Caius, and then if they do have Wind Blast or Regeki Break later on in the game, the Caius has already hit play, it's already been negated. So you're not, you know, getting your monster banished, basically, which is the most important thing. Shadow Imprisoning Mirror also helps against the dark decks like Vayu and Dark Arm Dragon, which are very popular, and it has some niche applications against Blackwing, too. I think it's just good enough to bring in the one copy against them. And then System Down is primarily for the Ancient Gear matchup. It's a very tough matchup, actually, because of Ancient Gear Beast. This card does a great job of just getting all that out of there. If they have, like, a Gear Dragon and Ancient Gear Beast, you pay 1,000, get them out of there, and then they're banished, and you don't got to worry about it. It's... It's just a nice way to clear a board and clear a graveyard as well, simultaneously. Anyway, this is the deck we're going to be playing in the video. Once again, like and subscribe if you like this kind of thing. See you guys in the lesson. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Main phase two. Oh, okay, he, he quit. He conceded. They're scared. He can, what? Oh, man, oh, come on. Okay, okay, okay. This is a match. Okay, okay, okay. I think, honestly, that's a perfect starting point for us. That's a perfect starting point. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of talking points we got from just that one game. So, yeah. So let's go ahead and pull up the the replay. Actually. Okay. Yeah. Can you um, hold up. Let me let me pull it up on my screen and then I'll I'll share the specific replay with you. Can you see this? I can't. I can see a picture of you and a picture of my dog. Ah, fuck. Okay, hold up. Let me stop streaming. No, 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 no. But I I I, I can see I can see the, the screen as well. You can see the replay. Just, yeah, I can see the replay. Okay. Cool. 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 Okay. Cool. Sick. So. First things first, I want to talk about something you did here, which was which was really good. You picked rock and you won the rock paper scissors. Very good, very good. You know why I did that? Why? Because rock is the best. No, I'm just kidding. No, because I was I was watching um, your uh, your glad video last night, which had me. I think this is the first video I've ever had where I've actually been laughing for like 30 minutes just because of how aggro you were going with like the whole video. I was laughing so hard with the video, <laughs> but I, that's why. Yeah, that was a cursed video for sure. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed yeah, it. No, it was, it was good, good times. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so you, you, you watched the Glad video, you saw the rock technology, and then you see your opening hand, which has a whole bunch of trap cards and Shining Angel Dimensional Alchemist. This is this is a big, big moment here. When you're thinking about having your cards be as live as possible and getting the most out of your cards, that's going to be something that's really big recurring theme with the fairy deck. You want every, right. every single one of your cards to not hurt you and to also help you, if that makes sense. So, like, help you as much as possible and not hurt you as much as possible. Here, because you have Torrential Tribute, Mirror Force, Royal Prescient, Solemn Judgment, you have four trap cards you can set and, like, kind of be safe from, from Heavy Storm. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're, you've got to be thinking, you've got to be asking yourself a question, like, which of these trap cards am I going to be forced to use? On the next turn if i'm going to be forced to use any of them there's a there's different uh opening opening hand configurations where you can set them to get the most out of your cards if you set for example i know on the first turn of the game you set shining angel with torrential tribute this is kind of a this is kind of a tricky setup right because now you're looking at torrential tribute being a minus one if something goes wrong where you have to activate it so let's talk about positions yeah. where you'd want to activate torrential tribute on the first turn of the game if your opponent Normal summons, like let's say you set Shining Angel, right? That's your right. opening. Let's say your opponent normal summons like an Ancient Gear Beast, or let's say they normal summon uh, Light Sworn Aaron. Those are the two cards that can attack into a Shining Angel. And this is kind of like metagame knowledge. You'll you'll kind of get used to that as you mm -hmm. as things go on. But you'd be forced to Torrential in those positions, and you'd be forced to two for one yourself by setting the Shining Angel with the Torrential Tribute, but also not setting the Mirror Force or the Solemn Judgment or the Royal Oppression. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. So if if I'm setting Shining Angel as my opening, I'm either setting all four trap cards because Solemn Judgment protects you from Heavy Storm, or I'm setting Mirror Force alone, basically. So mm, okay. the only thing you're losing to by setting Mirror Force Shining Angel is the Ancient Gear Beast, which is your opponent going to summon that into an unknown back row? Maybe. Maybe they are. Maybe they won't. Who knows? But the idea is that you have you have like a trap card set behind your shining angel that won't be forced to two for one yourself in most situations if that makes sense 
And okay, no, that makes sense because I, I, my, my original thought was like e- either set the mirror or the Churchill, just because I know it. Um, well, not in that in your sense, it makes more sense now. Either set all four or set the mirror. But like in my head, I was like, mm, I didn't, it didn't even occur to me to like probably use because like I didn't want to set them all because I, I would get heavy. But you just pointed out like you can just saw on that because then you, then you'll save the rest of the trap. So like that's that's exactly. probably like, something I'd probably. Know. Exactly. There's another opening configuration you can do. Because you have both Mirror Force and Torrential, you can summon Dimension Alchemist and try to blind flip a monster. If you do, now your Torrential is actually like really good. Right. It's kind of like one of those things where it could be a situation where you're forced to Mirror Force like a Stratos or something because Stratos would make the Alchemist miss timing into Torrential. But um, that's the next thing I want to talk about, which is misses- missing timing. Do you know what makes Dimensional Alchemist miss timing? Yes, because uh, it's an old ass card, so it has a when effect. Yes, yes. So do you know the do you know the instances in which it will miss timing? I uh, I know the two off the top of my head is Ryko, because oh. it's um it's him being destroyed isn't the last thing that that would happen, so that's when it misses timing because of the milling. Okay. And the other one is. God, I don't remember the other one, but I do know if it gets banished, you also don't get the cards either because it has to be in the graveyard. But I know, I know the Raikou one for sure is because it misses timing because of the milling. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, Raikou. So, so like you said, it being destroyed isn't the last thing to happen. And that's generally what makes it miss timing. So in Yu-Gi-Oh, if, um, let's say there's a chain link, right? Let's say you have Dimensional Alchemist in play here. He's right there in the center zone. And then yeah. you have Torrential Tribute set. And your opponent... And let's say you have a monster banished. Whatever. Let's say you have a monster banished. Your opponent summons okay. Elemental Hero Stratos. You can activate Torrential, but because Elemental Hero Stratos' effect is the first thing to happen, it's Chain Link 1, and Torrential is Chain Link 2. If you Torrential Stratos plus Dimensional Alchemist, since Dimensional Alchemist is destroyed Chain Link 2 or higher, it's destroyed not as the last thing to happen in a chain, it will miss timing as well. Does that make sense? Um. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the first thing that's going to... Well, the last thing that's going to happen is the Stratos because it'll still get the search. Exactly, exactly, oh. exactly. So in these openings, one thing that I, I really like that you were doing is you were kind of like talking to yourself, like talking through the plays. This is one really cool thing you can do on DB, especially because you are an auditory learner, as, as we kind of talked about. You were talking like, okay, if I have this, then he has that, that sort of thing. That's That's a really good way to sort of like visualize and physically map out like what it is that's going to happen over the next course of actions in these openings i think it's a good question to ask what could hurt me basically so if you're sitting here and being like if i set shining angel and i set torrential tribute what could hurt me and in your mind you're thinking this is the worst case scenario and then you've already mapped out the worst case scenarios where you're forced to two for one yourself with torrential tribute that's one way you could hurt yourself does that make sense yeah yeah so that's a good question and, to ask in the openings, I think, if that makes sense. And then, and, yeah, and in, in, in my process, when I did that, and well, or now in my now what you pointed out, I probably should have done the mirror force instead of torrential or set all four. Um, but when I did that, it's because I thought, okay, if he's playing black wings and he brings out Shura, because I didn't know what the deck was at the time, and he brings out Shura, and he, you know, destroys the shiny angel, then he's gonna get advantage right now. So that's why I was like, okay, if rather than him. But then that's why you pointed it out. I'm minusing myself with that torrential. Exactly. Even though the hypothetical Shura is gone as well. I'm minusing myself with that. Exactly. And if the fear is Shura or um, Fire Dog, you can actually set Shining Angel, set Royal Oppression, and just have that be your lone back row. If they attack over with Shura, you can't oppression the Shura's effect in the damage step, but you'll get your DD Warrior Lady or whatever off the Shining Angel. And then if they try to synchro in main phase two with either the Vayu or the Flanville Magician that they get, you can Royal Oppression it. So it's good uh-huh. It's good to kind of ask yourself these questions like, what is the end result of them having Shura here? What is the end result of them having whatever it is that punishes me, basically? Like, let's right. say a DD Warrior Lady or, or whatever. I mean, DD Warrior Lady, you'd honestly be pretty happy just letting them trade that with the Angel because now your Alchemist has a ma- monster banished. But there's a bunch of different things that like when you're walking through 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 your head like what is the end result of this scenario and how do i best position myself for that end result basically that's Mm -hmm. how you want to that's how you want to do the opening okay okay moving past the opening that's that's a lot about the opening 
the opening is pretty big with fairies. Like if you if you mess up in the opening, this is where like ninety percent of my losses happen is I mess up in the opening. Right. Yeah. Opponent's hand is uh really bad, thankfully. So they just pass. Here I, okay. I was, I was, I was on the money about the gores because like he didn't do anything, so I was like, okay, he, he probably has gores or tag and he's gonna he's gonna hit me with it. Exactly, exactly. So back to that same thought process, like thinking worst case scenario. So like let's imagine this board state. Where your opponent mm -hmm. does, let's just say they have gores, right? What's right. what's the best possible outcome for you, given that they have gores? How do you get the most out of this situation? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay, so like first things first is you want to get the most damage as possible. So right, 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 because then they're gonna have to either drop it on the first damage or they'll drop it on the last damage. Yeah, and if they drop it on the first damage, that means you get to eat the token for free by battle. Right. So one hundred percent, because you have mirror force, which is like a the best answer to gores, for sure. I am like, um, and you predict gores from the opponent. I'm like one hundred percent certain that you should flip summon the shining angel and get in the extra damage here. This will actually matter later on. I'll show you. But yeah. Okay. So like this shining angel, this is like actually 1400 is a lot of damage. It's it's like a good amount. It's going to cut your opponent off from using your royal oppression at least one time later in the game. It's going to okay. put him closer to certain lethal setups and we're going to cover some lethal setups later in this game. Um but it's going to push him one one bit closer to like lethal setups and it's also going to make their gores a lot worse if they're forced to drop it on the 1400 to save life points. So here you just attack with the alchemist, which is still fine. I mean, you recognized, I think you even said it out loud that you have mirror force for gores. So you did recognize that you had the response to it, which is fine. But um, also another thing they could mess up is they could special summon their gores in attack mode and you could attack with the dimensional alchemist before. And this is kind of one of the things we talked about when we were, um, when we were discussing before the video is like, if you think your opponent's worse or they're a weaker player, they will summon the gores in attack mode and you can actually attack with the alchemist first and then crash the angel and get yourself a DD warrior lead lady and honest whatever you want to get yourself off the off the angel set up your soul of purity and light that sort of thing um but i think it, i think in general it's correct to attack with the shining angel than the dimensional alchemist basically okay yeah no that makes sense yeah um i know it's because normally like i like to s keep something set and i don't know maybe maybe you'll tell me later on that's probably not the bad but most best thing to do is keep things set just because i always like to keep maybe my opponent's guessing like um, so they know it's fairy, so they know it's an accumulative things I could have set, and so that's why I always just like to keep them on like on their toes about that. But it, that, when you pointed that out, it makes more sense. You just know, just get the damage in. Yeah, keeping a monster set does threaten a Raiko here, so it's not it's not a bad play. It's just that I think getting the damage in with accordance with your hand, like if you look at your hand, you have Solemn Judgment that stops a normal summon. Worst case scenario, Royal Oppression right. stops all special summons. Mirror Force clears their board. Torrential clears their board. So. You can be in a position, let's say you get in this 3200 damage here, right? They drop gores, they try to swing back, you mirror force, they lose their board, they normal summon a monster, you solemn judgment their normal summon, they try to special summon, you oppression it, you hit for 3200 again, all of a sudden, they're at 1600, and you have torrential mirror force oppression. Like, what What are they supposed to do? And if they, yeah. if they ever, like, try to clear your shining angel you get an honest and then honest is like guarantees you the last 1600 points so you can kind of see the game like unfold the yeah like I, I i couldn't even see that like right there like i just i just thought like okay dimensional alchemist attack if he has gores he has gores and that, that's that's literally all my thought at that point i didn't even like consider going into that forehead yeah yeah yeah, exactly so if you if you look at your opening hand configuration you're like this hand is a very like it's a it's kind of a fast hand right you can you can right. take an extra turn a couple different ways with your trap cards so if you get in fast damage your opponent's going to be forced to play defensively the rest of the game because of Honest, because of, you know, just Herald of Orange Light into Bryonic because of all this other stuff. So getting in this damage here is actually really big. When you get chances at free damage with the Fairy deck, I would say almost always take it because mm -hmm. late game you can close out really easily with like Honests. So, yeah. Okay, Um, they do drop the Gores. This is um yeah. kind of what you expected. Which is fine. And here I you said I almost thought they, I almost thought they didn't because of the of the lag from DB. Because I was like, oh, okay, they don't have gores, but no, he dropped it on me. Yeah, yeah, he was he was slow rolling you. Yeah. Um. Here, uh, you set the mirror force, but you don't set the solemn. I would have one hundred percent set the solemn, just because of mm -hmm. heavy storm. If heavy storm comes down here, you're gonna lose like three cards for one, basically. Yeah. 
Because they heavy storm, it kills both your back rows, and then they attack over your Dialk and you get nothing back. So it's like three cards for one card. And they do have Giant Trina and they don't use it, which I think is a mistake on their part. Um, mm -hmm. But if you had set the Solemn Judgment, you would have been like 100% good here, I think. So they attack over the Dialk, and then you have Mirror Force for the Gorse. Which, it sucks they didn't switch their token, but it is what it is. Yeah. You, you can only... You, you're forced to Mirror Force either way, so you have to... I'm not going to lie, that, 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 that token had me like per, like you know per, perplexed for like a little bit after this. Yeah, defensive monsters are one of the biggest weaknesses of fairy decks. So you got to you got to see the lines on how to get over them. It's it's kind of tricky. It's it's actually really annoying. Um yeah. <laughs> but you'll you'll the reason you want to save certain resources or like spend certain resources a certain way is when they do have these defensive threats, you want to have you're going to have to spend your resources on defensive threats with this deck. That's just mm -hmm. the way it is. Um anyway, they reincarnate for Gore's pitching Necrogarna, which I don't really understand why they did this. Yeah, I didn't either. I was like, I, I guess I was like, I was like, whatever. But I was like, I was like, that's just like I've never like I've, I've dueled with a couple of Lightsworn players, and I was like, I've never seen them do any of them do that. But I was like, okay. Yeah, I I don't really get it. I don't think they needed to do that. I think that was a bit of a misplay on their part, but that's fine. They do set the Ryko, and this is a really good thing. You correctly read that they have Ryko, which I think is super smart. You're thinking like, okay, what would they set here and not summon? And you've already seen the Necro Garden in the grave, so it's one of three things basically it's either hamster which light swarm plays like one of it's plague they play one of because it's limited or it's Ryko, which they play like two or three of so i think mm -hmm. you have i think you make a really good read and i think verbalizing that read is really good too i think what you're doing where you're like okay what do they have here what could they possibly have here if it's Ryko, then what's the worst that happens they pop my dialk i'll take that you know what i mean so yeah i think that's good um and then here you make a good play. You activate Dialk before doing anything else. I think this is a good play because this gives you the fullest information on how you want to play your other cards, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think this is also the correct play, not flipping the angel at this point because you still want to conserve as much information as possible, not tell them exactly what they should pop with the Raikou, basically. Right. Yep. And so the Raikou is actually going to target the back row, which is really good for you because, like you mentioned earlier, uh, Raikou would make this Dialk mistiming. And you would really like that, Christia. Christia is like one of the best ways to win this matchup. So yeah, that's why I was like, I was like, damn it, I was like, that I actually I, I didn't know about the damage thing with torrential. That was, that's why I was like, okay, that, that's why I said never mind. I'm glad you pointed that out to me because I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you attack into a monster and it flips face up, it's not technically a summon; it's just being flipped by damage. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That, yeah, that I'll keep that. yeah, yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. And then also trap cards. You can only activate counter trap cards or trap cards that affect attack and defense in the damage step. Right. So, like, you can't activate Royal Oppression in the damage step. You can't activate Torrential Tribute in the damage step. So if your opponent special summons Gores, you can't Torrential Tribute, basically. Does that make right. sense? And you can't Royal yeah, Oppression yeah. Gores. And then later on, you you understood the Shining Angel Royal Oppression thing as well. So we'll get we'll get to that. But that's a really big thing to understand in Edison is those things. Okay, so Ryko yeah. mills three. They do mill a wolf, which oh. is kind of unlucky. Yeah. But not the worst, because you you have two cards. Like, if he attacks over the Alchemist, that's fine. You get Christia. If he attacks over the Shining Angel, that's fine. You get, you know, whatever you want from your deck. So, I think it's actually not that bad of a spot for you. Um, yeah, I was, like, I was actually really happy he did not hit my Alchemist, because of what you said, missed timing. Because I, when I saw that Christia, I was like, fuck, if he hits the Alchemist, I'm not going to get that. Exactly, exactly. So, I think it was really, really good of him, or really, really good of you to, like, play this information game where you kept the monster set here instead of flipping it first because the shining angel being face up it's not going to get over that defensive token anyway there's mm -hmm. a good chance maybe his raiko pops your shining angel because he thinks it's a raiko or something which is totally good for you because you have another shining angel in hand like it's it's not a bad trade for you whereas the alchemist equates to a christia which is like your highest value thing basically yeah, yeah. So, so i think you played that turn really well um here they do top deck heavy storm and you have solemn judgment for it which is good here here is that i was thinking for the longest time because i was like if I do that, and because I'm trying to save the oppression for you know maybe JD or something or another wolf or anything like that, but like I was I was going back and forth. Maybe I don't know if you heard me, but I was just like, because if I do that, and uh, um um they like Lila me, then I would have been just all for not. You know what I mean? So that's why I was like going back and forth. But I was like, you know what? If they have the Lila, they have the Lila. Okay, so here's why I was talking about in the commentary. I was saying um I was saying you shouldn't solve judgment here in. The reason being is if they have Celestia, they pop both your monsters and they mill a wolf, you die. 
That's right. Yeah, see, that's why I was like, that's why I was like, yeah. I don't like, like this. And that's a lot of damage, too. And they have already have Wolf on board. I was like, damn, I don't know yeah. what to do. I was thinking not Solemn Judgment. And also the reason you don't need to Solemn Judgment is you're protecting Royal Oppression. But in theory, like, the only way your opponent's getting through your board is giving you a Christia. They have to kill the Dimensional Alchemist, so you will get a Christia. And Christia does what Royal Oppression does, but better. Yeah, and that's why... Um, I don't know if you heard me later, but I was like, I was like kind of biting myself in the ass. It was like, fuck, I shouldn't have played this oppression. Yes, yes, exactly. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. But basically here I'm thinking, if you're thinking a little bit ahead, you're like, okay, this dimensional alchemist has to die. I ha mm -hmm. I have to get a Christia. You, in your hand, like even if they, worst case scenario, Celestia, Mill a Wolf, pop both your cards, you get the Christia back. Because Celestia doesn't make a missed timing because the last thing that happens is Dialk is dying. All um, right. And then... I'll, uh, in your hand, you have Shining Angel. You have you have the life points because you didn't pay Solemn. You can crash Shining Angel twice, special to Christia, um, and then get back either the Honest you got off Shining Angel or the Herald, and then just be in a in a checkmate position against your opponent. So I mm -hmm. think definitely right here when they Heavy Storm, I think it's right not to do this. And they actually make a, a really bad play. <laughs> um, they don't like Trunade or anything, or like try to... They just... Ignore your last back row, which you just Weird. paid four thousand life points to protect. I'm like, why? What? That's obviously a good back row. Like, why would you ignore it? He, you just paid four thousand life points to protect it. So I think they, I think they messed up by not true nating. Um, right. But like I said, like in order for them to get through your board, and they don't end up having the Celestia anyway. But in order for them to get through your board, you got to get, they got to kill the Alchemist, and you're gonna get the Christia back. Um, and then they do attack into your set monster, which I'm a little confused by. But I guess it makes sense. Um, at this point, if I'm them, I'm like 100% certain it's a Shining Angel or a different type of light monster that you would right. set here, like a DD Warrior Lady. So I guess it's fine to, to attack it, but I don't know. I, I think that it's kind of a questionable play. So here... I was gonna ask you, is this the right move? Because um, no, I didn't. I, I, I was really like trying to go back and forth on like what to pick. Okay. The shiny. So here, I want to talk about a lethal setup with this deck. Right. A very, very common lethal setup, which is Bryonic plus Christia. So right now, after this shining angel that he attacks over dies, you go to two fairies mm -hmm. in grave. If you get Herald of Orange Light from your deck here, they have no more attacks, so they can't attack over your Herald of Orange Light. On your turn, you can. Normal summon your Shining Angel. You can Synchro into Bryonic. You can Special Summon Christia, get back Herald. And then you'll have Bryonic, Christia, plus Herald to, like, stop an Honest or whatever. And that's... Um, wow, I didn't know that. I don't even see that. I didn't see that. That was a possibility. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a common, is a common lethal setup. And you can bounce both their monsters, play around Honest. You could even just, like, hold your cards in hand and attack and then Herald the Honest if they have it. You could bounce mm -hmm. the wolf, put the put the dead cards back in their hand. Like, there's a bunch of different stuff you could do with uh, Brown at Christia here, which I think is definitely one of the lethal setups you should be considering. Um, like, if you if you don't know their hand, like let's say let's say you don't know their hand, you know they have Gores, which Christia mm -hmm. shuts off. You know you'll be putting a wolf back in their hand, which Christia shuts off. And the way they were checking their extra deck, this is one of those DB reads, and you had the correct read. You're like, oh no, they're checking their extra deck. What could they have? They you had the correct read that they have Plague. So you knew they have Plague which is another card that Christia shuts off just because they were checking their extra deck. You know, like yeah. that's, that's one of those like, oh, okay, they're checking their extra deck. They probably have plague. Like, and that's another thing you can do to trick up your opponent too, is you could check your extra deck, even though you don't have a tuner, just, just give them like a little bit, like make them worry about having a, you having a tuner or whatever. Does all mm -hmm. this make sense? Does that, everything make sense here? Yeah. So just kind of like a, uh, um, as far as that view in the extra deck. So that's just like, almost like a bluff kind of like, okay, maybe I got something here too. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So getting Shining Angel, the reason it's not the best is because it doesn't guarantee you a Christia as well because they do have Necrogardna. So you want to be right. aware, you want to be aware of your opponent's graveyard. You do um, you are aware of the Necrogardna later on, but it does trip you up a little bit, I think, because they they went for this. So <laughs> here they summon Plague. They they sink her off into Bryonic, and actually here I think you might be forced to oppression. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think you have to oppression this, which is unfortunate because it does shut off your entire hand, more or less. Yeah, like, like after this, I was like, damn, I should have just like not done the oppression. I mean, I mean, I should have just like like you said, I should have just let all this go because then I would have yeah. I would have been able to more things later. 
Yeah, exactly. If you had gotten Herald here, so let's say he makes Bionic and you get Herald. You actually don't have to oppression. This is another reason why why I like um getting Herald here. Because if he bounces the Herald with the Bionic, you can normal summon Shining Angel, attack the token, and if they or attack Bionic or whatever, if they Necrogarna, you Herald it, and then your Christia is live or whatever. Mm -hmm. Because the Herald's now in your hand. Or whatever. If that makes sense. Yeah, um, no, yeah, and so on your turn, you draw DD Warrior Lady. You were talking a lot about whether or not you can banish tokens. You can banish tokens. Oh my god, yes. this that, that that does so much because I was like, because I someone but, told me like you, you can't banish them, but I was like, what? You can't book them. You can't put tokens face down. Is okay, probably okay. what you're thinking of. Yeah, tokens can't be face down, but you can banish them. You can return them to the hand; they would just disappear. You can return them to the deck; they would just disappear. I really like your play here, though. I actually really like setting DD Warrior Lady because th in this position, uh, you know your opponent has Gores, you know they have um, Plague, and you know your life point's getting a little uh, a little low. So mm -hmm. I do like playing defensively and playing to Tribute Summon this Christia. I think that's actually a really good play. Once the Christia is Tribute Summoned and in play, it's going to be very difficult for them to win. They can't drop the Gores you know about. They can't use the Plague you know about. So... Um, it's going to be very difficult for them to to deal with the Christia, and as soon as you find a Herald, you're safe from Honest as well, and the game should just end from that point. So I think playing right. to tribute some of Christia here is actually a really smart play. I think it's really good. Um, also, setting a monster, it preserves information. It preserves the information that if it's another Battle Recruiter or a Ryko or something, so it's confusing them. It's like, okay, maybe I attack what I do know, which is the Shining Angel, and ignore the set card because the set card is kind of like mixing up the opponent. If the opponent was, you know, heads up, they would have attacked your set monster here. And it's, an, I don't know if, I don't know if setting uh, DD Warrior Lady is the best move. I think I probably would have set the second Shining Angel. Just because it guarantees that, like, you'll have two bodies in play for Christian next turn, except if they have Eren. Which is the only thing that um, it doesn't guarantee it through, but um, right. either way, it's still fine. Because, you know, it would have banished the token. And it's still, like, misinformation. They're probably not going to attack it anyway. They Gold Sark for charge. They actually should have Gold Sark for Honest here so i think that's actually a really big misplay too on their part um they need to draw charge next turn based off their position they can't wait two turns to find charge and honest is what they need to answer a tribute summon christia which is what should be on their mind right now because they mm -hmm. know they know you have christia because they attacked over the dimensional alchemist if that makes sense no it does yeah so yeah they attack the shining angel they try to oppression it they realize they can't and i mean that's just like uh, the damage step ruling we were talking about earlier. You get yeah. Nova Summoner. Here, getting Nova Summoner isn't bad because it you can force the Necrogardener by attacking the token. If they don't Necrogarden it, then um, you can just tribute some of the Christia. And if they do Necrogarden it, then... Um, or I guess if you do Necrogarden it, they can tribute some of the Christia. If they don't do it, then you can just um, you can just Heavy Storm and special some of the Christia because you top deck Heavy Storm, which is very fortunate. Yeah. Very, very yeah, I was, I was, I was like, I was like, Hulk, oh my god, let me get an MST or something, and it ended up being heavy storm. I'm like, oh my god, that's the best thing that could happen. Exactly, and I think you also make a really good play here by um, using the Nova Summoner to special summon Honest. I think that's a really good play. You could have made a riskier play, which is get, um, what is it? Get Herald of Orange Light, um, main phase two synchro, and do the Bionic setup again. Where you go synchro with the shining angel and the honest into bionic special summon soul banish two fairies so you go from six to four and then mm -hmm. uh special christia add back the um herald of orange light but you would need to top deck a fairy for that to be really good um and you would need to fade honest for one turn so that's a riskier play i think it it puts you a little low but yeah i think i think that would have been much more viable if had i not played the judgment earlier Exactly. That, 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 that judgment kind of hold me like later on, just because I, exactly. like, I was already five points. Everything ended up working out because you because you ripped the heavy storm. That was that was really fortunate. So so that was a cool game. I think there was a lot to cover there. Um, is there any questions you had on anything in that that we talked about a little bit, or anything you want to mention that you take away from it? Um, just that I don't I don't realize how much more I can like go into Brio more than than I think I can because I I didn't. I didn't think I can. Like, I, I know I can go into Briar, but I didn't realize how often I'm able to. Because yeah. I, I don't see the lines. 
Yes, yes. So Harold, Harold is very useful as a two-star tuner. Oftentimes, when you yeah. do go into Bionic, you're going in as a minus one. So you have to be careful. You are spending two cards to make Bionic, and then every card you pitch after that is further minus ones. The only time you ever want to go into it is when you have some sort of guarantee for a kill setup, which is like Bionic plus Christia, where you get your minus one back immediately, and you like they have one normal summon, and you can just Bionic bounce it every turn. So it's like a, it's like a soft lock, basically. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a few other like kill setups like that. I think that we we're, we're definitely going to cover in this series the the like kill setups. There's like double honest into return kill setups. There's a couple other kill setups we'll we'll go over. But I think that was a really good first match. Do you want to um, go ahead? Quick... Okay, what's the quick question? Um, with honest, it stacks, right? Yes. So okay. If you, if you activate two of them, you will gain two times the opponent's monster's attack. So if right. your if your opponent has a big monster, that's really good if you have double honest because you're dealing their attack points as direct damage, basically. If that makes um, sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Anything else from that match? Is everything else pretty straightforward? No, I, I, I um, it's pretty straightforward. You, you opened up a lot of lines for me. Like you, you made things like you, you, you basically told me like why you should and you, you should play like these certain traps or this certain trap. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good thing to to focus on. It's just like your your opening positional setup. Make sure you're not playing your cards to conflict with each other. As as right. as little as possible, basically. Uh, eventually, it's going to happen where you're going to be forced to like activate oppression with Christian hand. There's going to be situations where it has to happen. But if you can avoid it, definitely, definitely do avoid it. it keeps your keeps your hand as live as possible. Gives you the most options. Helps you play out of the most situations, basically. All right. Um. Do you want to get another game? And this time, I'll be like, kind of um, backseating, like uh, listening to your thought process, interacting with you while you're playing. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I think that's that's a good follow up to this. I'm gonna go ahead and log back in on Tooling Book, and then we'll do that. I also have to go in because I timed out due to inactivity. Nice, nice. Yeah, that was a bit of a bit of a lengthy thing, but you know what? I, I think I think we got some good stuff. Got some good, got some good whatevers. No, it's good, it's good, good information. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, um, let me let me stop screen sharing so. Yeah. It doesn't lag. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Um, while while we're getting all situated here, I do just want to go over the list that we're playing in today's video. This is the list. It is uh, got three Christias, two main deck Thunder Kings, side deck Kaiku, and Grand Mole, as well as a System Down and a Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. Shadow Imprisoning Mirror helps against Caius. It helps against the value decks, those kinds of things. System Down right. is for Ancient Gears, of course, and Machinas. Kaiku is really useful. Floodgate against Miracle Fusion decks. It also comes in against Lightsworn as a sort of like way to control their graveyard. Grammol is a uh, proactive out to Absolute Zero. It's the only thing that uh, answers Absolute Zero at equity, or not at equity, but at plus one. Uh, yeah. Sided out, or not sided out. Well, yeah, sided, si moved one of the bottomless trap holes from the main to the side. That's where we made room for one of the Christias. We cut one of the Rikos because um, I find myself siding them out quite frequently. And yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think those are the two changes for the two Thunder Kings. Oh, I also cut a Nova Summoner for the for a Thunder King because I felt that five recruiters is pretty difficult to support with everyone playing deck dev. And then I've got three. Yeah, cool. yeah. Really hose is there. Three dust for the for the light imprisoning and stuff. So that's the list we're playing in today's session, more or less. Okay, cool. Um, do you are you ready to to host for a game? Are you good? Um, I had a quick question. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. It's about the side. I mean, for like the longest time, most people, including myself, would have the master's restriction of the pulling the rugs. Is it because the metagame is a bit faster now that they're kind of just like dead cards at this point? Um. Okay, so the reason I don't have pulling the rugs in this extra deck or this, um, or not extra deck, side deck, is because I don't really necessarily feel the need to stop like a Deep Sea Diva or a Caius one time on the summon. I would rather stop all of the Caius effects or all of the D.Va effects with something like Royal Oppression or Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. Okay. Uh, Mask of Restrict, it's gotten a little bit too much of a liability because everyone's playing Phoenix Wing Windblast. Yeah. And to a degree, I mean, that makes Shadow Imprisoning Mirror a liability too. Um, but I think Shadow Imprisoning Mirror has a little bit more application than Mask of Restrict, and it has a similar function in that it negates Caius, which is really what you need it to do. Caius isn't that big of a deal when it doesn't have an effect. It's just a, what's that card? The 2400 vanilla 
um, from Pharaoh Servant. You know which one I'm talking about. The, yeah. <laughs> uh, the attack is 2400. What is it? What is the attack? What is that card called? Um, Beast of Talwar. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't mind that because that can just trade one for one with like your, your Shining Angel or your DD Warrior Lady or whatever. You don't mind that so much. But when Caius is banishing your anchor monsters, that's when it's a problem. And Shadow Prisoning also covers like Vayu and it covers Dark Armed and a few other cards that like actually just give you a lot of trouble. So, um, but yeah, I think, I think for right now, Mask of Restrict isn't right because the only decks Mask of Restrict was for was for frogs and quick draw. And right now the frog deck is actually like really good against Mask of Restrict. They're so good against Mask of Restrict. They can just like, they have three Regeki Break, three Wind Blast. They also yeah, have, like, it's like the, the cards useless against those like those trap cards is like it's a liability. Exactly, exactly, and they also have um another issue is they have Elemental Hero Ocean and Stratos, and they are playing Unifrog in the main deck. So they have like ten ways, not counting Heavy Storm and Space Typhoon and those cards, ten other ways to make your Mask of Restrict look really silly. So I think relying on yeah. it is not great. I think Shadow Imprisoning it's better than Mask of Restrict because it can at least be like a, a jank fiendish chain where like. You can have it set, and then, like, if they summon a Kaius, you can chain it and then get the negation then. And then later, if they mask of or if they Phoenix Wing Windblast it or whatever, their Kaius won't be in hand. It'll already be in play. So they won't have yeah. that. It's it's kind it's of like... A yeah. It's like a really jank, like, Effect Veiler, but slash Floodgate slash whatever in this build. But that's, that's kind of why we've moved away from that. And then I think pulling the rug, the biggest issue with that card for me is it's only good going first. Uh, when you're going that's second, true. they summon Stratos, and then you're pulling the rug does nothing. Or they summon D.Va, they make Cataster, and it's like, you look at your pulling the rug, and it's like, it doesn't answer the Cataster, which you need to answer. So, um, I, I think it's just a little too narrow for, for this deck. It's, it's not bad. I think it's totally played. No, 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 I, 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 no, I, I agree with you. Uh, it's um, it's very, uh, I guess you could say, situational. Like you're, It's basically for specific things, and it's better just to have uh, more things that hit more things, like you say, like with like the Shadow Imprisoning. Yeah, yeah, and and these cards in the side deck, or the, yeah, the side deck, they hit what you actually lose to. Like, for example, like the machine deck, they summon gear frame, mm -hmm. you know, you could pull in the rug that, or you could have system down in your side deck, and then the card you actually lose to, which is ancient gear beast, when they summon that, you have system down. Or let's say they go summon the gear frame, get the machine of fortress, summon that, system down, you banish both. It's like, it's fine. And system down also works going first and going second, whereas like, pulling the rug if they summon gear frame on the first turn all of a sudden you're pulling the rug is just a dead card so yeah um i like pulling the rug a little bit more when quick draw is more popular but i don't think quick draw is that popular so uh, i don't think so either yeah i really love the addition of thunder king that you added just because like i i i think it's a dope card i think it's like really um a lot of people hate on it for whatever reason but i think the fact that you can just like stop adding cards and just like um the special summon and it's just a 19 other beater so on an on offense chance they do have deck dev. You, will use, you still have the Thunder Kings, which I have had in uh, other matches where it's actually won me games because I have a top deck it under deck devastation virus, and they didn't really have an answer to it. Yeah, yeah. I actually think this card is incredible right now. People are playing Terraforming a lot. People are playing Stratos. If you go first and you have this, and their hands like Rota, Ecall, whatever, this card's insane. You have Honest to back it up. You have Heralds to back it up. Um, and then especially in post board, you get the Nox to clear like Rikos and stuff that normally give it trouble. I've, I've had a lot of games where, like, maybe they, they out your Christia, but you still have a Thunder King in play, and they can't special summon their Synchro or their JD or whatever because you have Thunder King. So I think it's just a, as an extra piece of, like, uh, aggression, and I, I think it's really good in this deck, too. That's why I yes. obviously have moved him to the main. Uh, do you want to grab a game? And then we'll we'll hop sure. into that, and then that should be a good little good little segue. Thunder King Ryo, you know? Yeah. That's, this is hype. He is, he is king. This is hype. This is this has been a good session so far. I think. Yeah, I think I've really been enjoying this. You've been like opening my eyes to like, like a lot. Like just like I, there's so many things I didn't realize you could do with fairies. I mean, I know you could do them, but I didn't realize what you can do with it just because of like I, I've never like been like uh, aware of the the lines you have pulled me so far. Yeah, for sure. I think it's cool too. I'm like taking a, a whole bunch of notes. I'm like, okay, like watching you play. I'm like, oh, I should talk about that. Oh, I should talk about that. So I have like this huge like notepad on my phone right now of like things <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to them throughout the um throughout the session of course um one of the things i'm i do want to talk about in this in this match as soon as we're um as soon as we're in it is the um is sideboarding too as well i think that's something that can be very difficult in certain matchups 
and it can be tricky for for players so i definitely want to hear your approach to it and we can talk through like some of my approaches to it too i think you have a lot of good ideas when it comes to the deck i think it's just a few things like play wise that you could improve upon but as far as like okay. the, the deck composition I, I stuff goes that. i accept you right uh no no don't accept me just just wait for someone okay. else and then i'll i'll be a viewer basically yeah okay uh come on in who wants it no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes it can take a little while to get a game they really need a ladder that'd be sick yeah it looks like nate ninja is hosting down there for edison format if you want to oh never mind canceled yeah there you go if you want to hop in yeah nate ninja's that. game cool and i'll just watch that when it goes up sick okay dope i'm going with the good old rock see how that dares me okay he picked rock go rock again the battle of attrition yes. nice nice you're Let's 2 2 and rock paper scissors great great skill great skill to have in this in dueling book <laughs> yeah all right so i'm not gonna know your hand you're gonna have to tell it to me basically sure and draw a card so my hand is Dimensional Alchemist, Shining Angel, T-King, Brain Control, Heavy, and DD Warrior Lady. Okay, how do you want to start this hand off? Um, so I'd either want to set Shining Angel, because I don't know what they're playing, or uh, summon Thunder King, and just hope it affects them well. Okay, so as of right now, about 30 to 40% of decks are playing Elemental Hero Stratos. So I would say Summon Thunder King. Right. Yeah, I would, I would say Summon Thunder King. Especially because okay. going first and having it in your opening, it's so big. It's just, it's great. Next turn, if your opponent sets a bunch of trap cards, you have the Heavy Storm, right? That's like one of the things that could out your Thunder King. Okay, so I Summon Thunder King and... I guess just that's it, really. I, I mean, it could set heavy or could set brain, but I'm like, maybe I, those probably be useful for later. Yeah. yeah, I don't think you need to set heavy or brain. I don't think you need to expose either of those really powerful effects to mm -hmm. to sweepers or removal. I think it's fine to just pass. Oh, yeah, your turn, buddy. Another reason you wouldn't want to set brain is there's a good chance you're going to activate heavy storm this turn. So um, you don't want to heavy storm your own brain, basically. Ah, uh, fuck. But that's not bad. Your Thunder King Ryle's already taken a card out of their hand. That's not bad. That's also, that's also not that bad because you have the DD Warrior Lady, which just that's true. trades for whatever they make. Yeah. So what do you know about this matchup so far? I know that Rekindling is, is a... Oh my god, I fucking hate Rekindling. Yeah. Remind me again what your hand is. is D-Elk, DD Warrior Lady, Brain, Heavy, and what's the last card? Uh, Shining Angel. Shining Angel. Mm, that's a good one, too. Okay. Yeah, Rekindling's a bitch, for sure. Um, But in general, the Synchros aren't too bad because DD Warrior Lady just trades pretty effectively with them. Right. And Honest also helps you a lot with the Synchro Monsters, provided you can find them. They didn't set any okay, back so row. That's interesting. So for draw for turn, I drew Mystical Space Death. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Well, you've got a few options. You could set DD Warrior Lady or set Shiny Angel, right? I don't know. What are you thinking about? Do you want to clear the Thought Ruler right away? Do you want to play a little bit more defensively with a Shining Angel? What are you thinking? I'm thinking... I think just set the DD Warrior Lady just for one for one it. That's Get it out of the way. That's assuming they're going to attack it with the Thought Ruler, though. That's true. That's true. Hmm. If I s go with Shining Angel... And they attack it with whoever they do attack it, it'll open up more lines for me. That's true. That would open up a lot more lines for you. Um, You know what? I think I am going to do that. I'm going to set the Shining Angel. All right. 
And then I think so I, so that way I, I could, we could save the DUD Warrior Lady for a more problematic card later on if they have something. Yes. I think you do also maybe want to commit your Heavy Storm or your Space Typhoon here. Your opponent's back row light, so maybe you can bait a Heavy Storm of theirs by setting something right. of yours. Yeah. So okay. wh whichever one you think is more important, Space Typhoon or Heavy Storm, I would save that one in your hand. And then set the one you think is least important, basically. Mm, I know Flamville, at least from the decks I've played, they do set a considerable amount of back row. I, I'm surprised they haven't here. So I think I'll just set the MST for now. That seems and good. And then, then we'll go from there. Yeah, and that then seems I'll just good. Set the Shining Angel and just pass on that, right? Yeah. Yeah, that seems good. So I like this. I like this too because because they didn't set, and you know they do. Are you thinking that they have their own heavy storm? That's something that crosses my mind usually. Is That's that, right. Yeah, they might have their own heavy storm. I'm also thinking about like like you said, like rekindling or the other monsters they could have in their hand that wouldn't be back rows. This is good for you. I think this is good for you. The down goes Shining Angel. Declare effect. Yeah, get your fourteen hundred. Get it. Here, where, what to add though? What's in your hand again? Oh, so my, my in my hand is DD Warrior Lady, Heavy Brain Control, and Dimensional Alchemist. I just get another DD Warrior Lady. Did you bring her out already. Yeah. Alrighty, she's out. I mean, Are you afraid? Everything else that you would get, Honest or Herald, uh, or another Recruiter, the Recruiter exposes you to another Fire Dog. That's true. The Herald and the Honest would actually set you back a Normal Summon. And you want to get ahead of Normal Summon, because outside of Rekindling, this Flanville deck is very Normal Summon reliant. They can't do yeah, anything like, without um, a Normal Summon. I'll bet money that that set is probably uh, Spy. Could be that. Could be a Ryko, could be a hamster, could be a lot of yeah, different things. They do play that actually. Yeah, you get a point. Spy is definitely the most common, for sure. Mm. For a draw for turn, I drew Soul of Purity and Light. That's a good draw. That's a good draw. Cause now you can do some crazy shit. Uh you could summon. Well, you could summon your whole hand if you really wanted to, but. I mean, what do you want to accomplish this turn? What are you, What is your goal? Um, I guess just get board presence. Because besides the DD Warrior Lady, I don't really have anything else. It's, you know, I just have to bluff as MST, but they technically are the ones in control at the moment. True. True, they are. So, the DD Warrior Lady in your hand... Mm-hmm. That responds to their rekindling. So let's say they have a rekindling right now. Your DD Warrior Lady in your hand right. trades for their rekindling. If you commit it now and it dies to like a Ryko or something, that could be problematic. But if you commit like Dimensional Alchemist now, it's not too bad because you're going to have the DD Warrior Lady guaranteed banished. So if that dies, it gives you another out to a Synchro Monster, basically. Um, I think... I think this turn, you definitely want to clear the Thought Ruler, right? Like, you don't want to let that stick around. No, I don't want that, because then they'll just keep getting life points. Yep. Um, what do you want to do about the set monster? If it's a set monster, I don't really have anything besides my second DD Warrior Lady to deal with it. Because everything else is weaker. Unless I summon Soul Pur Purity Light as well. Yes. If the read is that it's a spy, then the soul also can't attack over it. Right. Um. But you could go, like, DD Warrior Lady soul this turn. Or you could go Alchemist soul this turn. I don't think either are too bad. You could also just hold the soul and go, like, DD Warrior Lady maybe set Dimensional Alchemist. I don't know. So, so set the Alchemist? Yeah, that'd be a more like um, conservative line you could take. You could you could attack the DD Warrior Lady into the Thought Ruler Archfiend, set the Alchemist. If their set monster's a a spy, they'll flip it. They'll get Descendant. They'll pop your Alchemist, and then you'll get to add back 
uh, the DD Warrior Lady, and you'll get a plus one on them. That's true. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. If if the read yeah. is a spy, then that's the best play. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go into Thought Ruler. Yeah. How much is that? 1,200? Yes. 1,200, declare, banish. You have to be really careful of your life total here. Yeah. That's true. I'm already down basically a 3k. You also get punished if it's a fire dog too, but I think it's just worth it because the set is so likely a spy, like you said. Yeah, okay, so let's just set this guy um, and then just pass on that, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what it is. It was a spy. You had the read. You had the read. That was a good read. Very, very good read. They'll probably bring out Descendant, right? Yeah. At this point. When it comes out, you want to ask them if they're going to priority activate. I don't know how that ready typed. Um, let them oh, know. The, put priority. Let them know the effect is good. It's good. They're probably checking for Herald or Oppression or something like that. That's good. And now you want to ask if they have priority. Okay, so they said yes. Okay. They're going to tribute the spy. Oh, they're going to target your back? Oh. That's scary. Sure. That's actually okay. scary. Yeah. Ooh, that's scary. Ah. Mm, that's tough. Hate to see it. Yeah, that's tough. It's okay, mm -hmm. though. Maybe they don't extra two thought rollers, and you can do something with the brain control next turn. Uh, let me declare the effect of, of this guy. Yep. And head back. Dang, two fire dogs. Mm -hmm. That's tricky. And they have no back row for your heavy storm and your typhoon. Okay, uh, attack for 14. I'll take it. And yeah, that's two. I'm not like, oh, five bells are one of the few decks that I just, for life of me, have so much trouble with. Yeah, it can be tough. I think with your draw, you had. Um... It didn't line up so well because you drew Space Typhoon, Heavy Storm, and Brain Control, and your opponent never really gave you a great opportunity to use those cards. Right. But in general, uh, the concept is that you're going to go low on life, but if you land a Christia, you win the game. So, sure. basically... they can't do anything. Yeah, they can't do anything. And Fire Dog trades one for one with Shining Angel. So you, they go Fire Dog, they bring out the Flamvel, they make Stardust or whatever, and then you get out DD Warrior Lady, and that trades with the whatever you get you get where i'm going with this yeah yeah if they make Maybe it's either start, it's probably either stardust or darken i have a feeling it's one of those two yeah or colossal yeah stardust okay yeah if you draw christia here you're actually in a fucking amazing spot because you can brain well, stardust special soul and then tribute summon christia that's true 33 yeah. percent chance come on <laughs> let's see it uh shining angel shining angel okay okay um that's tough. <laughs> That's yeah. tough. You can use Soul to attack over the Fire Dog. And then you can use uh, DD Warrior Lady to trade with the Stardust. You'll go to 1500, but you'll be dead. Yeah, I mean, you'll we'll pretty much have nothing on board at that point. Yeah, you'll be dead to rekindling and brain control that way. You could also, like, just make Soul attack over the Fire Dog. Set Shining Angel, but they can they can do a lot of stuff to get through that anyway so let's just yeah let's just clear their board yeah i think so and then just hope to fade rekindling or brain control i know it's, yeah it's really unlikely it's really unlikely but i don't know maybe okay so let's just go with soul first so question is who do we banish though uh probably stardust oh you mean from the grave yeah for soul uh i say i don't know uh that's, that's a good question. 
Uh, probably Thunder King at least. Yeah, Thunder King and maybe the Alchemist. You know, if I ever get another one in hand, maybe I keep it in loop. Yeah, yeah, that seems good. That seems good. Let's do those two, and then special summon the good old boy or girl. I don't know if it's a he, she. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's a it's a soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Summon the uh, Didi Warrior Lady. Go into battle phase. Soul attack fire dog. Yep. Soul attack and Sardis, declare. I take my thousand. And goodbye, DD. And then, do I set any of the spells or do I just keep them holding? I'd probably set Heavy Storm. You need to bluff yeah. some sort of defense because you're dead to so much. So I think you you're just right. I mean, they haven't been setting anything, so either they don't have much or they're just um, they're waiting on me. Yeah. Okay, let's do that and see what they do. Yeah. Hmm. Nice. That's this is nice. very very fortunate. Yeah, this is very fortunate. Draw for turn, torrential tribute. That's incredible. That's a really good draw because that's going to protect you from a rekindling. That's yeah, so, true. Yeah. Um, what else is in your hand again? You have you have a DD warrior lady. You have a shining angel, and what's the third card? Brain control, right? Yeah. Okay. And so. what do you want to do this turn? Hmm. I guess one for one heavy with the back row. It could be also be a bluff, but it could be something real as well. And they just didn't feel like needing to set it until now. So just probably just get at, get that out the way first. And then from there, um, well, then, then that, that way, um, you know, we could also set our turn to tribute after. And then as far as monsters, um, if that set is probably a spy, then I can summon DD Warrior Lady and one for one it. But if it's a Raiko, then, um, then they'll probably pop either my soul they probably pop the soul because I'm going to set the trench last. Yeah, okay. I don't think you should um, summon before attacking. And the reason being is because if it is a Raikou, they're forced to pop soul. And then you can set Shining Angel, which is a reasonable amount of defense. You still have uh, at least one Shining Angel and a Nova Summoner in deck that you can cycle through. So right. you can protect yourself from a fair number of attacks. And then you'll have Torrential as a worst case scenario. But I think sure. you should. I think you should just attack the set monster first. I don't think you want to take the extra five hundred either, um, from running a DD warrior lady into a spy. So, yeah, that's true. So definitely um, heavy storm then attack. I think is the right. Yeah. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. Main phase one activate heavy storm. What's the set? Is it anything real or is it a bluff? Let's see. It is deep prison. That's a good. That's good. That was real. That was real. Hmm. Okay, so enter battle. Come on, Dolino. There you go. Let's see. Spy or Raiko or Hamster? Hamster. Okay. So that's going to get a Raiko. Okay. But that's not the worst, I don't think. I think you still just, like, commit your cards, and then they have to Raiko one of them, but... All right. So now I set Shining and set Torrential. Yeah, yeah, I think it's that. It's either that or set. Yeah, I think it's that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, let's set that. And just enter. Let's see what they do. Hmm. Um. Okay, that's fine. Do I activate it or do I just let it go? I think you have to let it go or else you die. That's true. That's true. To any normal creature. Yeah. Mm. Yay, we're kindling. Gone. That's, good. Them. That's good. Yeah. Still have to be careful of another one here. I mean, another one kills you. Okay, that's fine. That's not bad. If that had happened last turn, you would have lost. So it's not too bad this turn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's still not too bad, I don't think. 
Okay, so gray. So this one you want to get Nova Summoner first. Right. Because um, then you can get Shining Angel, then Shining Angel can get anything, including DD Warrior Lady or whatever. Whereas the Nova Summoner can't get anything. So, so I summon Nova Summoner here? Yeah, you have to, yeah. Okay, but so much, go yeah. it has to be an attack, right? Yeah, it does, because Shining Angel doesn't let you switch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you. Okay. Yeah. They might not even attack it, but... They will. Okay. Uh, it loses it loses the 300 attack, right? No, nah, that's, only, that's only during... Um, it would be during your battle phase, so... Oh, okay, that's right. Okay. So, so you just so take, take the Yeah. And then here, yeah. I think you have to get Shining Angel. Yeah, I think you have to get Shining Angel. You could either get that or get Honest in Defense. I actually don't hate getting Honest in Defense either. That's yeah, not... let's do that. Yeah, that's not too bad. Okay, bring it Honest. Yeah. This is funny. It keeps you at 900, which is just barely enough for Brain Control to be live still. Yeah. <laughs> That's super funny. Okay, they're probably going to synchro. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder what they do here. Because they could make uh, quite a few number of things. They could make a six star. Oh, that's true. Yeah. They could also make nothing. But I don't really like that. If they, they make nothing, if they make nothing, then break and shows live with the magician, right? Because then we'll have a tuner for access. Exactly, exactly. Hmm. They're big thinking. They yeah, can't make yeah. dark end, so they can't like pop either of your monsters. I think you're gonna get this soul back. I don't think there's anything they can do to convert it since they already normally have no. a fire dog. Okay, they're going for the eight. So who are they going for though? Maybe, Maybe Red Dragon. Probably Colossal. Red Dragon would. Oh, Red Dragon. Nah, Red Dragon wouldn't work because Solar Purity and Light attacked. Yeah, oh, it's Colossal. Colossal. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. But they're making a defense. This is actually big. Your DD Warrior Lady can banish it. That's true. And you're not going to take any damage. That's actually really big for you. Wait. Uh, draw for turn Thunder King. Oh my goodness, what a draw. Um, okay. I think you switch the honest, right? To attack. Okay. Right? Because you're going you're gonna to try to get the most damage in as possible right now, right? Right. And you for sure got to clear the Colossal with DD Warrior Lady, so that has to be your normal summon. Okay, normal DD. Yeah. And then... Okay. Now it's just a matter of like how if you want to attack directly with the honest to get the most damage and play into Gores, or if you don't want to do that. But Gores is in the grave, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> That's true. So probably attack Soul for most damage. Yeah, attack with attack with all your monsters. Yeah, I say attack with all the monsters. Okay, so honest, get rid of this colossal fighter. No, DD Warrior Lady Clip. No, DD. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Fuck, but you're right. Oh, cause then come back. Fuck. Just say misclick. Just say misclick. Just say misclick. Just say misclick. Say misclick. Say misclick. 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 Meant DD Warrior Lady. Yeah, I meant DD Warrior Lady. Yeah. There, it just. Yeah, I meant DD Warrior Lady. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, thank there God. you go. Thank goodness. Thank you, Nate Ninja. Shout out to Nate Ninja. Ah, yeah, that was the whole point. That's the whole plan of this turn. Okay, okay. Yeah. You get the. Oh, I mean, that's yeah. why you. That's why you summoned it. I mean, you get the. <laughs> Oh, because yeah. I, I did ask, forgot about the the recurrence effect. Yeah, that's why he made it in defense, so you could yeah. so you couldn't run it over. Yeah, yep. Okay, and then he yeah he took it all. Okay, okay. so main phase two. Normally um, here though, normally here you would attack over the Raiko with the soul, if they didn't have Gores in the grave, because soul, um, would deal nineteen hundred over the Raiko, and then honest attacks directly, and then they get a weaker token. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So normally that's how you would attack. If just just for heads up. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's good. Yeah here um bounce back the honest right yeah of course yeah you don't want to leave that in attack and you want it to protect your soul so bring back the hand and then from here just pass right 
If you could also something they have to... you could also set brain control as a bluff. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, they do have their trap negation. Okay, they set. They set. Okay. Hmm. Start. Let's see what we got. We got Harold. That's not bad. That's not bad. We got we got some lines here. Yeah, you do. I think you can attack the set with Soul though. I think you don't have to think about it too much. Let's see. Ryko. Okay, that's fine. Pop Soul. Fine. Um, wait, do I negate that? Um, if you do, you have to pitch honest. So I would say, n well, it's tough, right? Because if, yeah. if they have a normal summon stop, then your Thunder King's all of a sudden bad. Let's think. Hmm. I'm, I'm alright. Think. Give me a second. Mm. If we do that, but then we two for one it. I guess you're just gambling. Gambling. They don't have a monster that kills you in their two cards and a bottomless trap hole. That's the yeah. gamble. Uh, versus them having a rekindling. I think it's more likely that they have a bottomless trap hole. So I think it's better to negate the Ryko. Okay. Declare effect of Herald. I could be wrong, but... We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. It's a great... It's a great... And now they don't get um, they mills don't get, for rekindling. Yeah, they don't get mills. I mean, all of their flamvels are in grave. All six of them. Well, that's true. Yeah. Um, um, if you summon, you play into torrential. But I think it's still worth it to do. That. I could be capping. Maybe. What know. do they add from hand? Oh no no wait. Uh, mm, I don't know. I think you can summon it. I think it, it's just Torrential that screws you, right? Yeah, so we'll see. If they got it, they got it. Yeah. Don't think they had it. Yeah, it would have been flipped super fast if they had it. Okay. And it's not bottomless, so it's something else. And it's not a battle trap, or unless they hold the battle trap. They might have held it because they, they expected the Raikou to kill the soul. That's right. Yeah, it could be a Mirror Force, too. Gotta be careful of that. Oh, okay. Draw for turn, another soul. That's really good. That's really, really good. I think you just attack with what you've got. Probably start with the soul. Okay. It's our battle. The reason attack. you start with the soul is if it's a spy. Um, it's another record. Okay. That's fine, right? Because I mean, we can't even do anything about it. Yeah, that's just going to happen for sure. Mirror Force, okay, so MST, okay, there's one of their removal. Oops, I'm lagging a little bit. There we go, okay. Mirror Force being gone is good, Spy being gone is good, because that walls out your cards. Yeah. You could summon the second soul, because they do stack, so it would decrease all your opponent's monsters' attacks by 600. Okay, let's do it then. Yeah. If it was Torrential, they would have done it earlier. You definitely want to banish uh, Thunder King plus one Fairy. Or you could banish two fairies, but I think banishing Thunder King plus one fairy. Actually, you could hold the soul in case you draw Christia. I'm trying to think. Okay. No, I think it's fine. I think it's fine to just summon it. Okay. Uh, I guess. Um, Herald or Honest? Probably one of the battle recruiters. Because if you draw Christia, you want to be able to have Herald and Honest as options. That's true. Okay, let's just do that with something here. Yeah. And I'll go to end step. Now if they don't have two thought rulers or two colossal fighters, they can't actually get over your board, even with a rekindling. Or I guess they'd they'd have to go red dragon, but I don't think that kills you. Oh okay. Sark? That's not bad, though, because you have brain control for it. That's true. Okay, so what is he going to pop? 
Sure. Okay. And that's also good for you because um, Top Deck Christie is still alive. It, okay, it banishes the target. Okay. Right? Banishes the target? Yeah. 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 Totally. Okay. Hmm. I'm thinking if that Sark was a, like a top deck of theirs, because then they would have done it earlier, right? Oh, for sure. For sure, for sure. Okay, ooh, okay. Draw for turn, DD Whirly. That's pretty good. Uh, but I think it's... If I, if I brain here, it's lethal, no? With the Warrior Lady? Because they, 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 they lost the Mirror Force. You're right. Yeah, so you got to summon the Warrior Lady first. Okay. Yeah. Their set card might be Book which loses you the game that's true do you want to take that risk you yeah. could also you could also just attack sork first they might book your dd warrior lady if it's book it's a it's it's not a 50 50 but um there's it's basically a read like um, if you think it's Book of Moon, I mean, one Book of Moon is gone, but this deck for sure plays three. If you think it's Book of Moon, then you should, um, you should attack first. If you don't think it's Book of Moon and you want to go for game, then I say run it. So it's, it's up to you. I'll let you figure this one out. So if I, if it, it is Book and... If I bring, if I bring, and they chain book to the gold sark, then then that brain's dead, right? Yeah, yeah. You don't get to take their monster if they book the sork, and then the game ends because you're at a hundred, and they can just attack over your DD warrior lady. That's true. Damn, this this, this is a this is a big thinker. Yeah, but if you attack with DD warrior lady and you banish it, all of a sudden your brain is dead and your DD warrior lady's gone. And you're giving him three more turns. So it could be like a Starlight Road. It could be something random, but. I think we just have to push. If they have it, they have something. And, you know, what you can do at that report, right? Yeah. I say run it. If that's what, if that's what you All think right. is right, then run it. Let's see. If it's book, come on. Okay, in the book. It is oh. not. Interesting. Not unless they save the book for an attack. Uh, they would have booked the sorcerer for sure because it, <laughs> it's lethal <laughs> to book the sorcerer there. But um, yeah, so it's for sure not book. Interesting. Yo, yo, let's go. that was a W. That was a W. Oh my god, that was, that was crazy. That was insane. It was royal royal oppression. oppression. Wait, he didn't oppression your soul. Maybe he was waiting for it. You should ask. Maybe he didn't want to flip it because if he drew rekindling, you could still negate that. Oh, that's right. So he was he was waiting for him to advantage on it before acting. Or maybe he drew the oppression after the soul was already in play. I don't I don't exactly remember. Um, damn, that was close. Do you want to play was, a game two against him, or do you think do you think that was good? I think that. Was ah good. yes. Yeah, let me offer a rematch. Yeah, ask if he wants to play game two or not. That was a really close match. I think you played it really well. I think, I think it worked out well. I thought about tribute for this for a while. Oh, he said. Or he, Wait, he if won. he had if he had tributed for Caius, targeted Caius, he would have won the game because you're at nine hundred. I think maybe he just played it conservatively too much. Yeah, he played a little too safe. I think for sure because if you chain bottomless, obviously it's it's bad for him if he does that. But yeah, <laughs> so sideboarding, sideboarding in this. Uh, in this matchup, what do you think you want to bring in and take out? Um, for sure, shadow imprisoning because of the uh, gravekeepers and um, and Caius and maybe dark end that that shuts up that shuts it all in all for them. Interesting. Okay. Um, 
Royal Oppression. Because they play it too, so that usually means that it doesn't. It's not as good against them, right? Um, I think it's all right against them. I think it's kind of questionable because they have a lot of. I think let's 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 talk about like uh, sideboarding in general. How do you want to approach right. the game? How do you want to attack them? What's like a weakness in their strategy that you want to exploit? What does their deck um, do basically? They set a lot, so that would probably mean the Nox have to go in automatically. Yes, that's a great way to exploit one of the weaknesses of their deck. Their deck is they had a lot of flip effect monsters. That game, right. in particularly, they had a lot of set monsters. And it slowed them down a lot. It made it so they could never get the last points of damage in. Which is exactly what I said like during the game. I was like, you're going to go low, but if they don't rekindling or you stick a Christia, you just win. So, yeah. um, the Nox exploit their weaknesses. I think that's pretty good. The fire dogs resolving didn't matter too much, um, I don't think, in the grand scheme of things. I think royal oppression is good though. I think it is a good way to stop the rekindling turn, which is important. Um, I also think dust tornado is not bad, because they'll have their own royal oppressions and stuff. And like, a cool thing about dust tornado is if they're going first and they set Reiko, and they set a back row. Like, let's say you you don't have Knock. Um, then you can, like, set Dust Tornado, and at least you'll get a plus one off the Ryko because you can chain the Dust Tornado, if that makes That's sense. That's true. So, so Knock's in for sure, Dust in for sure. All three of them, or just two? Or I have a feeling they're going to bring in Light Imprisoning Mirror, but I you could try two, and then maybe go up to three if you need it. Okay, so we'll go for two for now. So two Knock, two Dust. And then if you want the Royal Oppression, um, or like the Grand Mole, Grand Mole's a good way to answer their like resolve synchros and stuff and to answer their set monsters. I That's think, true. I think yeah. it's very good. Um, and then siding out. Um, I usually side out at least one or two Dimensional Alchemists in this matchup. Yeah. Because it doesn't attack Ooh. into Raiko or Hamster or Spy well, and it also doesn't do well against... What's that guy? Flamville Fire Dog. Yeah, he's 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 a sitting duck sometimes. Yeah, you can side out uh one Ryko. I do like to leave one Ryko in. Actually, you could probably side out both Rykos, honestly. But I, well, I mean, we've never even saw them to be honest this matchup at all. So I think we can do without them. Yeah, it's an out to royal oppression, which is important, but you know, it's fine. And I don't well, we know, have you, a, we'll, we're bringing in Dustinators too for that as well. So true, kind of like bringing in a more versatile chainable out, especially going second. Yeah, yeah. Um, Freed isn't bad if they have like Caius Chaos Sorcerer. It's good to clear those. It clears uh, Colossal Fighter too. It's it's pretty shit against Stardust, but um, yeah, it's like the only thing that doesn't do against Stardust. But you have DD War Lady for Stardust, so should be fine. Yeah. yeah. And if, if you are bringing in the Royal Oppression, I would say maybe maybe board out like one Christia or one Soul. Soul's pretty good. Maybe like one Christia or something. Um, right now, so far, so far selected is just the Mold, the Nox, and two Dust Tornadoes. Okay. So that being the case, I'd probably cut like a Christia. You don't want to crash your recruiters too much in this matchup. Or you're not going to get a chance to crash your recruiters that much in this matchup. So, so uh, take out the Rikos, two Alchemists, and a Christia? Uh yeah, that seems that seems pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I I gotta give it to you. Um, you side you you basically are telling me to side the very important cards, whereas I usually have had the bad habit of siding in damn near half my side a lot of the times, and and in some cases you need to, but a lot of times I do it where I'm like, you do that, and a lot of times it doesn't even work. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I feel it. Actually, one thing I'm thinking about now um, is we should side in damn near half our side. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, we should bring in the Cyber Dragons, though. I, I think they sh they're pretty good. You could probably cut... Indeed. Probably cut... Um, honestly, another Christia. <laughs> and then... Uh, maybe, like, a Shining Angel or something. I'm bringing the Cyber okay. Dragons. Because you're going second. Yeah. Yeah, it seems pretty. You know, good. it's funny. When I first started this deck, I really thought it was just like Christia Turbo, but that's not the case at all. If you ever get to summon Christia, cool, that's gravy. But a lot of times, Christia is just you know like 
if you have it, you have it. If not, there's you have to go another route. Yeah, yeah, totally. And your opponents are oftentimes going to be like side decking with Christia in mind. They're going to be like side decking yeah. to fuck that over. And if you can just pick apart their opening with stuff like Cyber Dragon, Thunder King, and like maybe like an Oppression or a Herald or whatever, then you should be good. Uh, I think that's a good configuration. Um, that should be good for the for the for this match. I think. Um, so just to, just to, just to review the sizes. So the sizes are two knock, two dust tornado, the mole, the cyber, and the cyber dragons. Yeah, seems good. Okay. We are done sighting then. Run it. Shout out to Nate Ninja for being super patient. This is super cool of him. Um, yeah. Shout out for him to uh, <laughs> accept this click. Yeah, that was actually also really cool. Nate Ninja, the homie. Yeah. For real, for real. Yeah, and I. I know some people are going to be like, nah, you already clicked. I'm like, well, how do you know, man? We're on, we're, we're in computers. Yeah. I think if you if you actually make that misclick there, you, you 100% lose the game. Because the colossal yeah. comes back, and it comes back in attack mode, and the game ends. <laughs> yeah. That's that was rough. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. He has a kid. He does. He does. Hmm. I also have a kid. You do? Shout out to legs. kids. Wait, what'd you say? It has four legs. It has four legs. What's your kid's name? Mix. Her name is Nia, and she's in she's an Aussie and husky. Dude, that's based. Are you? Yeah, she's pretty, you, she's pretty dope. You a dog person then, for sure. Um, I became one. Like I'm, I, I do love. I was big into dogs, but once I got her, I was like, damn, I didn't think I could love a, an animal like I do with her. This thing, even though like to eat up my girlfriend's clothing <laughs> only hers too she, she doesn't touch any of mine but her her clothing is fair game that's hella funny this um yeah. this girl i'm dating she's about to get a puppy and i'm i'm gonna start raising a puppy with her so we'll see how that goes should be fun um, yeah it's gonna be great man you're gonna love it all right we're in the game we're in the game all right is, is your head in the game it is so all right so um starting hand is trap dust shoot Herald, Dust Tornado, Mole, and Bottomless. That's great. That's a great starting hand. That does everything you want it to do. Based. Very based. Ooh. Uh, draw for turn, return from the rest of the mansion. Nice. What did you say was, was the hand again? It was uh, Mole, Bottomless. Uh, dust Tornado, Herald, Trap Dust Shoe, and uh, Draw for turn was return. Nice. You could honestly like mole set bottomless a dust. Oh, sorry, I'm not. I shouldn't be telling you. I shouldn't be telling you. Um, <laughs> no, no, I, I saw that line immediately. I was just gonna do the mole immediately and then just set dust shoot and set bottomless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause, cause I mean, it makes the most sense, right? Like you put it back in their hand yeah. and then you get to see the hand. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you, you you know these things. You know these things. Maybe set dust tornado. Cause once I do that, then they'll probably be more inclined to set something. Or a hold out dust. Um. You're gonna see the hand. You're gonna see if they have a heavy storm or whatever. But that's true. That's true. I don't know. What do you think? Do you want to set dust tornado or do you want to set? Uh, nah, you know what? Let's hold it because you know from problematic cards, and if they do have it, then you know we'll set the doors tornado, and then you know we we'll go from there. Yeah. There's no yeah. There's, 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 there's no need to blind when you have to have dust you. Yeah, especially in post war games, I like to be really safe with the dust tornadoes, just because they could have light imprisonings, and you need the dust tornado in those instances. If you lose it early on to a heavy storm, it's gonna feel kind of bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to. Oh, shit. I meant to go. Oh. Normal mole. Battle phase. Attack. Declare. Nice. Nice. Come on. Uh, main phase two. Set. Does shoot. And set. Bottomless. And pass. Uh, activate. Let's see that hand. Nice. So their, oh my god. Okay, so their hand is Cyber Dragon, Caius, Gores, Fire Dog, Ryko, and Spy, and Brain Control. Wow, that's a hand. Yeah, that's a little, they got a lot of things they can do. So you have Bottomless for the Fire Dog. Right. And Cyber Dragon. Yeah, well, the bottomless can only hit one of them. So. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. No, and, and plus, I don't have a monster, so they can't summon Cyber Dragon, actually. Yeah, they can't summon Cyber Dragon. Uh, Grand Mole does a good job blanking the brain control and the flip effect monsters. I think it's 
what do you think? Spies. What do you think is going to be the problem? Spy is going to be the problem to you? I think so, because then then they'll start getting presents, and then they'll bring out Descendant, and then they'll start getting into shenanigans. At least with Raiko, they're just, they're just trying to one for one something at there. I think Spy is all right, because if their turn is just set Spy, you can just grab all it. You you have a Herald coming soon, but yeah, if they brain control and like Caius, you that might be tough. But you also have a Herald coming soon for that too. So it's either Spy, Gores, or Caius. I'll I'll let you I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> Mm, spies, gores, or cut. Let me write thing. So, so. Hmm. I think. I think I'll just do spy. Okay. Because from, yeah, because from there, then um, literally everything else has to do, basically have to do with me having a monster or some sort of. They basically have to have board presence, and I have to with mole is basically keeping them at a standstill. And at least from there, they'll ha uh, at least with spy they'll have a uh, two monsters on board at that. Makes sense to me. Let's go with spy. Let me just write in the chat before I forget. Brain, Raiko, Gores. Caius type. Spy can definitely give this deck a headache. I can see that pick. I personally probably would have taken Caius, but um, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Now, why would you have selected Caius, if I don't mind me asking? Um, just because if the Spy resolves, then the Cyber Dragon's dead. And the spy doesn't really do anything without Caius. And you can always grand mold the set monsters forever. And they'll just be forced to like discard end phase. That's true. That's actually very true. I should. But now you know yeah, they don't have heavy, so you can set your dust tornado, which is good. Drop return is call for call haunted. That's good too. Um If I bring out Mole here and attack for 900, then they drop cores. Um, if I do that, then they or they could also not drop it, and then next turn they'll bring out Cyber Dragon, then bring out Caius as well. Oh, now, now I should have done the Caius. Yeah, you definitely you don't want to give them a chance to use the Caius till you have Herald online. Yeah. Okay. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna set. Dust that maybe call as a bluff and just pass because they don't have anything. They're gonna have to set something. For sure. Yeah. What are what are the other cards in here? You have Grand Mole, Herald, and what's the third card? Uh, return. Yeah, you don't need to set return yet. Okay. Okay. Let's just set that and set call as a bluff, and then pass. Yeah, and that's good. Here they'll probably have to set Raiko. Yeah. Or, or unless they drew something right now. They're probably the Raiko. Makes sense. End That's phase. probably the brain. End phase, you can dust that, though. So you can just get rid of it. If it's not brain, like if it's wind blast or something, it'd be good to get it now. Yeah, that's true. Oh, it was book. That's good. That's really good for you, yeah. Okay, so you know their whole hand still. It's it's brain, Kaya, Cyber, Gorse, Raiko. Okay, draw for turn is Dimensional Alchemist. That's Which pretty is good, good. right? Because it has Herald on mine. Yep, that means your herald's now online. So, I think you continue to bounce stuff with Grand Mole, and then um, prepare to herald yeah. Caius at some point in your life. Yeah. Okay. If you need it. All right. Back the hand it goes, and then just uh, enter. Yep. Hmm. They did nothing. Yeah. They want to force you to commit into Gorge or Cyber Dragon. I got nothing but time, my friend. So, drop return is freed. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. I mean, we don't really have to do anything, right? Uh. You could do some 
crazy stuff. <laughs> you could set freed. As a bait, and then, you know, for Caius? Yeah, so if he goes Cyber Caius, then uh, you herald it, and then now your call's live, and your That's free right. freed is also live, because you'll have two lights, and you'll have Grammel, I mean... That's right. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you could set free. You could also wait. I mean, it's, it's up to you. No, I, I like that. I like that. It, it, it gives us an advantage. Yeah. Or it should, at least. We'll see. We'll see what they do. It depends on what they do. They could also, like, Cyber Dragon attack, which is awkward. But you have Call of the Hunt. It's I, not, not that big of a deal. Yeah. I mean, I, I would do the Cyber Gaius thing. That's just, it just, that's what I would do if I was them. But we'll see. Yeah, it makes the most sense. Hmm. Set one, set two, and pass. Okay. So that sets either brain or something they drew. Well, here you can you can force the situation again. Yeah, I mean you can just grab all their monster over and over again. Yeah, and if they it's uh, if the back row is something there, then they commit to it. Yeah. They drop a turn. Uh, drop a turn, Thunder King. That's pretty good too. That's pretty good too, because that'll. I mean, if you summon that, um, that's just pretty good. Because that can negate Cyber Dragon. I, I don't know if you'd want to summon it yet. I think Gremmel's just still better. Because they have Brain yeah. still. Yeah, Brain, that's is, true. brain is awkward. Let's just, let's, just, let's just see what they do. What are you writing, friend? What are you writing? Oh, you Nothing. might have. You might have something. Actually. You might have something. Or get that? Huh. This is a lot of typing. Oh, looks like he's just he letting that happen. Interesting. Very interesting. Eventually, he's going to have to commit more cards, or else. Um, yeah, so he's going to starting. Yeah, exactly. So this is not a bad position for you, by any means. I think I'm you sure. can. I, I think you can just pass. Yeah. I'm going to be right back real quick. Like yeah, one minute. Fine. Okay, I am now back. I, say, I recognize Keegan's name for the YouTube video on edisonformat.com. Discord, you're part of that too. I am a part of that Discord. Yes. I am. Out. Shout out Nate Ninja. Hmm. He's real cool. Okay, so he bring out Caius. I mean, I'm not Caius. He brought us Cyber Dragon. I think that's... I mean, you just have to let that happen. You can't... Oh, we just joined yesterday. Oh, sick. That's dope. Always love and to see people... Joining up. I mean, Edison format's growing a lot. They had side events at like the last regional and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. And then plus, like, with um, all the paper, just because of how big it is, all, like, all like the cards are getting more pricier now just because everyone wants to buy them now. Seriously. If you guys want cool. Edison decks, buy them now and play play now, too. Yeah. Please. Yeah. You or, see that substitute is like a $30 card. Dude, are you dead ass? That's insane. Yeah, because there's only one printing. That's so crazy. Hmm. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you kind of. What can we do? Yeah, you gotta let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he might do that. 
Fuck. Huge kites. <laughs> Same. I mean, you can do some. You can do some stuff, but it involves playing in the back row, which is not fun. Yeah. Okay. Drop return is gores. That's not bad. That's not bad. Hmm. Mm. What if you grand mole his cyber dragon? That uh, that's what I was thinking too right now. Yeah. Interesting. Because then from there, either one of those traps, uh, one of those traps is either or both of them could be something else. Actually, now he has enough cards for it to be something else. So, how do you see his next turn going? If you Grammel the Cyber Dragon, what do you think he's going to do on his next turn? Um, assuming assuming Grandma gets to do the thing, gets to do his thing. Bounce um, card with both cards to get bounced back, and then from there, um, I'm sitting on a call of the haunted. And then from there, if the set is a right go, then not a spy he drew or anything. Um, probably not. Um. He'll probably want to pop the back row. Yes. And then mill three, or he'll either... You're, you're getting there, you're is, getting there. Which is fine, I get, which is fine, because, you know, I mean, it's just called haunted, you know. And if he attacks, then you drop gores, and if he tries to Caius the gores, you have herald, so then you're in a winning That's position. So, yeah. Right. Exactly. Okay, there you go. There you go. You're, you're getting there. You're getting there. I definitely think definitely think you want to swing the swing the grammar. Get that get that cyber dragon the fuck out of here. Get that guy out of here. If you have something, you have something. Yeah. At least like the grammar bought you a lot of time. And yeah. if it trades with the back row, okay. Let's go. That's good. That's good. Okay, so from here, I can't do much else. I could set the return as a bluff, but... You don't want to do that because of Gorse. No, right. That's right. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll just end turn and then we'll go from there. Perfect. Perfect. So regardless, they'll get rid of the back row either by, from this Ryko or they'll just tribute it off completely into the Caius. Yep, that makes sense. And if they don't do that, then they're still in the same position where they're just like drawing to discard and you just bounce back the set monster with the grand mole and you keep forcing them to do stuff. It's been a crazy game. I mean, you, neither player's even taken any damage. That's kind of funny. It's a war of attrition. Totally. They are up cards, but you have more cards in your deck like Christia that will blank more of their cards. So eventually you will Ooh. come back out on top. And if you think about it, like, Gores is a plus one. Um, but I don't know. Banisher. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah. When it attacks here, you could call Freed. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Because then they'll have to commit the Ryko next turn. If it's Ryko. Yes, exactly. When this happens, they're allowed to redeclare, right? They don't have to... Oh, my God. So this yeah. isn't bad. This isn't bad, actually. Because um, your monster does get destroyed. So Call of the Haunted will leave the field. Uh, That's right. Yeah, both Call okay. and Free do get banished because of Banisher. And his bottomless also gets banished as well. Oh, that's right. Uh, banished. Yeah. And so now okay. he can't. he does get to redeclare if he wants to. But it looks like he's going to. And we'll eat it. And now you get a drop course? In attack, right? Um, However you want to, basically. I think. Um, yeah, let's, let's just do that. And start turn. Drop return is Book of Moon. That's a good one. That's a really good one. So now your return's actually live too, which is cool. Your freed's banished. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could grand mole the set monster and then gores over the banisher. I mean, there's a lot of different ways you could approach this. 
Mm, no, let's do that because then from there, um, they're basically back from square one. Yeah. They do have Cyber Caius, they have Brain Caius, but um, you have Herald for that. So. They have Herald for that. Yeah. You do need to get rid of the Banisher before before you have to Herald, though. Because I think okay. that so Banisher like... stops Herald. Battle phase. Uh, we got to attack Gorus first, right? Uh, Over the Banisher? Sure, yeah. Either way is fine. Okay, so that sets probably the brain control then. Yeah, I could see that. It's really good for you that you... Well, I don't know. I also couldn't see it because, like, why would he set brain control with Gors in hand? Um, it's really good that you drew Book because Book's going to counter their their brain control when they go for it. They'll Unless... probably set the book in there, right? Yeah, I definitely want to set the book here. Okay. And then just hold the return for later. I'd say right. still keep holding the return for now, yeah. You don't need to commit it this turn. Just pass on that. Cyber Dragon. That's fine. Because now they're going to Caius. Yes. They're either going to do that or they're going to they're gonna brain control. That's true. Ah, they do. So they're going to bring you We book, right? Oh, you can't because they're targeting the token. But that's okay because yeah. you still have Herald for the Caius. So this is kind of what I was talking about earlier when I said you can't put tokens face down. But it's not that yeah. big of a deal. That, okay, now he does it. So from here, I declare right, uh, Herald? Yes. Declare Herald. And now it's actually Great. kind of kind of bad oh. this this doesn't stop that though because harold activates in the hand oh that's right yeah so tell him uh you can't pitch you also can't pitch thunder king because it's a thunder oh, you have to yeah. pitch pitch to yelk i i misclick you're good i know it's happening yeah that was a misclick yeah. i fucking hate doing book yep and now that's I'm actually not right. that bad for you either, because one of the ways they out the Gores is with Raiko, and now Raiko doesn't that's out nice. anything. Exactly. Nice. Rob, return honest. That's insane too, because that also isn't stopped by light imprisoning. From here, um... And light imprisoning is shutting off their Gores in hand. Oh my goodness, this is so good for you. This is so good. So I would just, well, no, because that Thunder King's just dead, right? So I just bring out Mole and bring out Cyber Dragon. I'd just say summon Thunder King. It still attacks. That's true. It's still backed up by Honest. I mean, it's more damage. Gore's attacks over the Cyber Dragon. I think you're in a great spot, actually. I think there's very little they can do to break this. They have to clear their own light mirror for their gores to be live. And when they do that, now the Thunder King becomes alive again, basically. Where it can negate synchros. Did the math run on gores? Um, 600? So they just gained 200 back? Uh, they did, they did it already by taking 1700 from the Thunder King. Okay. Yep. And then, um, yeah, your hand is what? Return? I think you could, honestly, uh, still hold the return. I don't think you need yeah. to. I don't think you need to set it yet. We've literally been in control this entire game. Yeah. Yeah, I think everything you've sequenced has been really, really, really nice. Saving Which the is crazy. For the yeah. What's Which that? is crazy because before, like, when I've been going up against Flamdel decks, I would get, like, 2 every time because I, I, I would just would not see these lines. Yeah, yeah. Now, now your 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 eyes are opening. You're you're ascending into the <laughs> the neural network of of fairy players <laughs> for sure, for sure. This is tight. It's been a good game. Uh, of course, the opponents made a few uh, sequencing errors. I think with the light imprisoning mirror, uh, maybe even summoning the cyber dragon before resolving the brain control. I think right. those, those things are a few little uh, minor errors, but that's that's all it takes really to lose a game against uh, someone in Edison format. Is you make one or two minor errors and. 
That's it. Curtains. They haven't seen a Flanville monster the whole game either. Heavy. That's fine, right? Yep. And that's exactly why um what I was talking about. That's why you hold the return. The only way their gores becomes live is if they if they have to heavy their own light mirror. Okie dokie. That's that's probably the right go. Yes, but you have the grandma for it. So you're big chilling. Job return, shiny angel. Ooh, that's good too. But you definitely wanna um definitely wanna grandma the monster. Don't don't wanna let yeah. him resolve that, yeah. Battle phase attack. And here you you can attack with gores first for the most damage, or you can attack directly with Thunder King. Either way, um, Thunder King plus Honest will be lethal damage. So I think you you want to attack with Thunder King first. Brain Control's already okay. gone, so putting them out of Brain Control range doesn't matter anymore. And they'll be forced to drop gores on this. Okay. You can run over the token with your gores. And if they do nothing, then you win because Grammel. And if they do something, then they lose because Honest. So you're kind of in a checkmate position right now. And then I don't even have to set the return because it's like no, it's a moot point right at this point. I would just because the heavy storm's already gone. So oh, that's true. Okay, yeah. Let's do that time. And next turn you can always like worst case scenario you lose your whole board whatever like they lightning vortex you or something you can um you can. He's exactly seventeen for uh, for free. For, uh, yeah, that's funny. Exactly, exactly. So even in the worst case scenario, you should be good to win this game. Yeah. Yep. Nice. I'm glad we were actually recording these for like a series. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Yes, me too. That's also fine. I think you can just um, take the damage, take 1,000. Yeah. And now it's banished for your return, which is like <laughs> so good. If he attacks, it's game, right? Because honest. Yeah. There it is. But you have to wait until um, damage stuff. Yep, there it is. GG's. 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 Normally there, when they attack, you want to ask if they have anything before damage. Because if they have Book of Moon, they could be like, wait, 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 I wanted to Book of Moon before damage. In this case, it didn't matter because you had ways to win the game regardless, but uh, generally speaking, you want to ask if they have anything before damage. Okay. Uh, you know, like I was saying earlier, I'm glad they're recording these and for like a series content because... We've been talking with a lot of information, which is I'm very, I'm gonna do my best to uh, retain all we have talked right now. But you know, sometimes you know, yeah, you, you miss some things. Which I'm glad we we're doing this so that way I can rewatch. Yeah, later when it comes out. Totally. This session's actually been um, a little bit longer than I intended. I do have to go soon. Um, no, that's fine. You know what? We we can we can stop here. Um, you know, this so far you've been like a great help so far, and I think yeah. today has been great. Yeah, I think it's been a great video. We'll do a brief recap at the start of the next one and everything. I'm going to stop the recording, but if you guys are watching this, if you guys are, are duelists and you're checking this out, make sure and leave a like and subscribe. Shout out to Miguel for doing this, actually, and being brave enough to like uh, do this. This actually takes a lot of courage. I, I respect it a lot. So um, shout out to you, Miguel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See you guys in the, the next episode of this.